Hey everybody, Omar here, the Knife Shark Guy, and I am back with another not fun-filled video. How about a serious video on customer service, uh, particularly for those that are into custom knives. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are, are aware of, of the customer service that's out there that comes along with each and every custom knife that you buy. Uh, and I'm bringing this topic up because this will be the second video that I have done regarding a gentleman who goes by the name of the Knife Gripes. Now, this guy, basically what he does is he collects people who have had really bad experiences with custom knives. And uh, he likes to get their complaints and then point the finger back at the knife maker who gave the customer such crappy service without allowing the knife maker to, uh, I guess you want to call it, have his say and have his day in court. Not that he's actually a judge or a jury, but basically that's what he does. He collects knife maker, uh, knife buyers who've had really bad experience with knife makers, and then he just pretty much points the finger back at the person who made the knife. So I want to do this video to talk about my experience with one of my all-time favorite knife makers, uh, the gentleman by the name of Erukis Blumeris. Now, this guy, uh, he has been around for quite a long, long time. I'm not sure how long he's been making knives, but you can pretty much guarantee he's spent almost all of his adult life making these beautiful works of art. Um, and if I'm wrong about that, I apologize. But from looking at the quality of his work, uh, you can tell he has a lot of pride in what he does. So let me explain my story before I even go any further on this video. These are two custom knives by Arucus Blumeris. Um, this is what we would call a full dress piece. Um, every part of this knife has got some sort of artwork on it very quickly. As you guys can see, it's got a Dama steel blade. We've got the blue Timascus bolsters. We've got the uh, black shredded marble carbon fiber. Unlike on a production knife, you might only have this kind of stuff. You wouldn't have this at all. You would have regular carbon fiber. But it's not even on both sides. On this knife, obviously, it's on both sides of the knife. We have this beautiful absolutely gorgeous vine uh, file work on the back side of the knife with a Dama steel backspacer. Now, Erucus Blumeris is well known for doing interesting things with backspacers and using whatever material he has around him uh, to make a backspacer. In this case, he used Dama steel block and it just looks absolutely stunning. Uh, on this uh, at Rukus Blumeris front flipper, the backspacer is M390. I always kind of laughed at that because if you know if you ever break your blade, you can always take the uh, take the backspacer, <laughs> take the backspacer, take it down to some knife shop, have the guy sharpen it, stick that on the end of it, and replace it with standoffs if anything possibly happened. But that's just a joke, obviously. But to get back to my serious point. Um, these are two very high quality custom knives. Uh, they cost a lot of money. And the gentleman that made the knife knows that very well. He knows that I spent a lot of money on his knife. And he is one of these uh, knife makers who wants to make sure that I am absolutely happy. And I am, a, you know, to him, you know, I'm, I guess you could say we got acquainted with each other. And I, you know, I kind of just. I guess you could say we became uh, uh, really good acquaintances. <laughs> I don't like to say good acquaintances because I don't really know that much about him. But we've spoken, we've chatted online a few times. And uh, he's just a really sweet guy. Uh, but anyway, back to the night grind. So this is my story, okay? When I got this knife, mm -hmm. uh, I bought it at the Blade Gallery here in Washington. And the knife was, uh, it was, it had some minor defects to them. And I let it 
continue for about a year. Uh, and then I caught uh, a Rucus Blumeris online, and I started talking to him, and I told him, you know, uh, this knife is off-centered, and so is this one. I said it very casually. You know, I tried to make it like it wasn't a complaint. Uh, and, it, it, and in all honesty, you know, maybe, it, maybe that was the problem, was that I was very, very sheepish with my talking to him. I didn't want to seem like I was complaining, but maybe that's what I should have done, was just to tell him straight out, hey, you know, the, the knife isn't exactly the way I like it. Uh, and I'm sure he would have respected me more for it, because that's just the kind of guy that he is. Uh, so anyway, back to the story. The knife, yeah, it, basically the knife was off-centered. When I pushed down on the knife, I could tell it had some sort of like up and down uh, blade play on it, which, which I was not happy with. I didn't have any side to side blade play, but when I closed the knife and I pressed on the knife, there was like, you, know, you could feel that the knife was kind of, uh, you could actually push the knife a little further into the handle, which I did not like. I didn't like that, plus the fact that the knife was off-centered. Uh, those are basically the only things that was wrong with the knife. The same with this one. It was just way off center. Now, if we look at these knives now, and I'm going to show them up to the camera. This is after they have been serviced. So you guys can see uh, that the knife is dead center. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Maybe I could push the lighting up a little bit better. See if I can get that. But you can see that now that the knife is dead centered right in the middle. And that is all due to Arucus Blumeris working on it and fixing it and getting it to be perfect. Now, it may not be such a big deal to anybody, and he did the same thing on this knife, right? He actually got it dead centered. Hope you guys can see that. Uh, and, you know, it got me thinking about the centering um, on these custom knives. Um, I began to realize that if the knife, when I got the knife back, I realized this. I began to realize that if the knife is off-centered, then the action probably isn't going to be as good as it should be because the action now is way better than it was when I actually had the knives when they were not, you know, exactly, you know, when they had those little minor things wrong with them. I noticed that the knife was flipping pretty good, but... I was surprised to no notice how much more better the knife flipped after he after he serviced them. Um, and considering the service, he didn't just center the knives, he also polished the knives. Uh, he, there were quite a few scratches on the bolster. He got rid of that. I don't know how he did that. Uh, same thing with this knife. He cleaned it up. He made it look nice. So basically, he gave the knife an overall Arucus Blumeris spa treatment on him. I paid absolutely nothing for the service. Nothing. Uh, and here's the thing we have to realize about custom knives. There's no written guarantee on a custom knife. At least I haven't seen one. I mean, they give you the cloth with the case, letting you know that they stand behind their work. Uh, but I don't know if they let it be known. You know, I'm pretty sure they let it be known enough, and it should be just understood. But unfortunately, all of us that buy these knives, we don't realize that it's not just the knife that you're buying, you're actually buying the maker as well. There's a gentleman that made this knife. It's, it's the quality behind the knife. It's the man who made the knife is what you're buying. And that's kind of important to understand um, when it comes to customer service. And so far, I have dealt with three different knife makers on customer service, and all of them went above and beyond what I expected. I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. Now, keep this in mind. I got these knives serviced during a pandemic, guys. I don't think people really understand how bad the pandemic is in South Africa. Okay? Things are, as far as getting any knives or buying any knives or getting anything in and out of that country during a pandemic, for the knife makers who are trying to make a living, they are having a hard time doing their job because of the pandemic, but they do it anyway. In the case of Erucus Blumeris, in the case of Andre Thorburn, even in the case of one of my favorite all-time night makers, Des Horn, they all uh, had United States contacts, right? 
Uh, I don't know what arrangements they've had with these people, but I'm assuming it was on friendship. I'm, I'm almost certain that it was on friendship. I don't think they pay uh, anybody in the United States to help them with the shipping. But that's basically what Arugus Blumeris did. He, he gave me the address of a friend of his here in the United States. I'm not going to mention his name, but he gave me uh, the address of a friend of his here in the United States where I could send my knives to. And then that friend of his would ship it to South Africa to be serviced. And then the same thing would happen once the knives were fixed. He would get the knives over to his friend, and his friend would ship it on over to me. Now, to be able to go through all that trouble for just one customer, think about that. He went through all that trouble just for me because I said the knife was not, you know, the knife was off-centered and I wasn't, I didn't even tell him I was unhappy about it, but he automatically sensed, well, he's a customer. I'm going to make sure that he gets the product that he paid for. And I was just totally, totally blown away. Not by just when I got the knives back, but all the trouble that the guy went through just to get the knife in the working condition that I paid for. And he didn't get any money out of me, any more money out of me than what I already when, when I paid for the knives. He didn't, it's not like he charged me extra for anything. He just realized, this is my customer. My customer needs to be happy. I have to make him happy. And then I started thinking about the knife gripes guy again. Um, and I began to realize that me as a customer, just opening my mouth and telling the knife maker that I was not 100% satisfied with his product, that would do more for his business and more for my own soul happiness in owning these knives than anything that the knife gripes could possibly do for the knife community because that guy, in my opinion, is totally useless. You don't go around pointing your finger at somebody and not giving them a chance to redeem themselves in any way. So. Night makers like Arugus Blumeris, like Andre Thorburn, like Des Horn, like J.D. Ellis, they don't listen to him. They mean absolutely, the night gripes means absolutely nothing to those guys. Me, as a customer, I matter more because I was the one that took the risk in buying their product and them servicing the knife, they realized was what they were committed to doing, no matter what. Um, and I guess the whole point of this video is, if you've ever bought a custom knife, and any of you guys out there own any custom knives, okay, maybe you've had it for a year, I don't know, maybe you had it for two years, I don't know what the knife maker's guarantee is on the knife. I don't, I don't know. But I'm going to tell you this much, if you do not open your mouth, nothing's going to happen. You're never going to be satisfied with the knife that you've got in your hand. You'll never, ever be satisfied. Uh, and what's going to happen is you're going to wind up like the knife gripes guy, just pissed off at the world. You didn't bother to explain it to, you, you didn't bother to say anything to the knife maker. You just automatically decided to trash the guy and trash his work and trash his livelihood. Uh, which is why, uh, you know, I'm really kind of hoping somebody brings the knife crimes down. Uh, you know, if this video helps at all to do that, then great. And it's not like I so much want to even bring the knife crimes guy down. I just want him to understand that you can't point your finger at someone without giving them a chance to have their say. It's just wrong. It's just absolutely wrong. And I think in part, you know, that is something that we all have to do because we don't need someone like the knife gripes telling us that we're that we're unhappy with our knives. We can just tell the knife maker and he will he'll basically make the decision what to do from there. And I will guarantee you it's more than likely going to be a positive experience like it's been with me right here. Because um, these guys, I mean, they make art for a living. And they're hoping that you're going to buy their product because they have to have food to eat. I mean, these guys aren't millionaires. They charge a lot of money for their knives, right? But the amount of time that it takes to make something like this, 
I mean, look at that fine work. Come on. That's ridiculous. Look at that fine work. You, you tell me he's going to be able to do that in 10 minutes? No way. That takes hours and hours of, I'm a, of hand file work. I know for a fact he did this by hand, not by machine. And, you know, you have to learn to appreciate what these knife makers go through. So, in you know, in short, my experience with the Rugus Blue Maris was on a scale of, of, you know, 1 to 100, I give them 200. I mean, just for making me happy. I mean, these knives now mean even more to me than they did before I bought them. Because now I've got a face attached to them. I know the guy that made them. He's a friend of mine now. I built a relationship with him. You know, I can talk with him online. I mean, it's a, I'm getting more than a knife every time I buy a knife. I'm getting more. I'm getting a connection. I'm making that connection with the knife maker. And every knife maker that I've ever spoken to appreciates the fact that I love these things. Uh, so they're going to go all out to make sure that as long as you are in this hobby, buying these expensive works of art, that... Uh, you're going to continue to keep supporting the hobby and enjoying the hobby for as long as you possibly can. And I'm almost sure they don't even care if you never, ever buy another knife from them ever again. Of course, the knife shark guy here doesn't believe that's going to happen to me because I'm just going to keep wanting more and more knives, right? But it's always good to know that when I buy my knife from Arucas Plumeris, it's guaranteed. It's just guaranteed. I don't need to listen to the knife gripes. I can listen to Arucas Plumeris tell me what he's going to do uh, to make me a beautiful work of art and make sure that it is top-notch to my satisfaction. And I believe, uh, in all honesty, that that is the case with every knife maker that makes knives for a living. Uh... And I, I guess I would like to just say that for every knife maker in the world, but I'm going to say, how about every knife maker in South Africa? It's a staple there. There's a lot of people that make knives out there, and knife makers like Everquist Blue Maris, uh, Des Horn, and, you know, Andre Thorburn, those guys that have been making these knives for years and years and years and years, they have set the standard. For every knife maker that's going to come after them, because they are a family. I mean, it's it's Andre Thorburn and Erucus Blumeris. They hang out together. <laughs> so does Des Horn. He hangs out with Andre Thorburn all the time. They're you know they're friends. They you know they don't have any gripes against each other. They're a fan of each other's work. They're they're you know. It's just a, it just seems like it's a really, really fun uh, club to be in. Uh, you know, I mean, I look at those guys, you know, they're like the Beatles of knife making, you know what I mean? They're just that great. I mean, I don't mean to put them way up there, but when you see stuff like this, I mean, you get it in your hand and you feel how smooth, you know, the action is on that. I mean, this is really spectacular spectacular work and the fact that they stand by it you know I mean these knives got more than just centering they got his version of a spa treatment and there is nowhere in there does it even when you buy his knife does he even say he's gonna service it but you have to ask to the knife buying public I'm gonna let you know right now you're gonna want to ask always ask uh, and I guarantee you won't be sorry. Um, I think the only advice that I can give to you is be nice. Be yourself. Uh, don't try and, like, overly hand them or, you know, because they can read that right off the bat. I mean, those guys are, you know, they're like you and me. They can tell when someone's when someone's overdoing it with the compliments or snowing them. They, they'll probably find that that to be kind of fake. And they don't want fake. They want you. They want you as you are. They want to hear what your problem is with their product, and I guarantee you they're going to work on it. Um, just like Arucas Plumeris did on these. I can't ever, I mean, I can't be even more happier than I am right now having these great works of art in my collection. I mean, I've got four of Arucas Plumeris knives, 
Uh, and I'm going to have to say he is definitely tops in my book as far as design. And as far as the knife gripes, I don't know when he's going to learn his lesson. Uh, but he's not doing anybody any good. He's not doing himself any good. He's not doing the knife makers any good. He's not even doing the people that he thinks the knife buyers any good. Uh, he's just, so far he's absolutely accomplished absolutely nothing. And I don't know how long he's had his channel up. Uh, but the knife gripes guy, what happens with this guy is he goes around and he points his finger at knife makers uh, for not living up to their expectations, not giving them a chance to talk, right? And then what happens is he gets on the bad side of one of these knife makers, one of them winds up suing him. And the next thing you know, you know, he's out there in hiding, he shuts down his website, and he goes to another channel where only his followers, he's kind of like the Donald Trump, right? Of, uh, of, you know, I guess of knife complaints or whatever you want to call it. Uh, because he shuts his website down and, and only his followers know where he is. And I would just suggest to his followers, you know, don't listen to the knife gripes, man. If you got a gripe about your knife, go and contact the knife maker. Keep on contacting him. Contact him in the right way. Contact him in the nice way. Don't get angry. Don't, you know, don't get mad and in his face because I guarantee you, you do that, anybody would shut you down. Um... And I mean, I mean, basically, this is a hobby. We've chosen to get into this hobby. If you're not going to be part of the community, then don't, don't be a part of the hobby. I mean, you're, all you're doing is you're just making more trouble for the knife maker. You're making more trouble for uh, the people that buy the knives. And you're, doing, you're, you're making more trouble for the knife community uh, as a whole. And then guess what's going to happen? If the Knife Gripes wins, you know what's going to happen, guys? We won't see these things anymore. The Knife Makers will just simply go away. They'll quit. They'll give up. And they won't want to continue making knives for us anymore. So, don't listen to the Knife Gripes. You have a gripe. That's fine. I understand that. I had a gripe. I contacted the Knife Maker. I would suggest you do the same. Contact him in a nice way. Uh, you know casually mention to him that you're not happy with the knife don't yell at the guy that's not going to help you um and really just be honest be straight up and i guarantee you your experience will be fantastic because when i went to uh, erucus blue Marius with my knives he was actually upset that i was upset about his work and he wanted to make it right he really wanted to make it right. He wanted to make it right so much so that even in the middle of a pandemic, I got my knife back within three weeks. I mean, and they are having a really hard time with the pandemic out there, trying to get knives, trying to get knives down to certain retailers that they sell their work to, and yet they struggle, they survive, they move on. They're going through whatever the hell it is they're going through, and yet they still find time to service knives that they've already sold to fix them up, you know, just to make us happy. So just keep that in mind the next time you're going to consider buying a custom knife. So in my own opinion, are custom knives worth it? Absolutely 100%. Did I pay a lot of money for these knives? Yes, I did. But I'm also, I also made a friend in the process. I also, you know, I'm also, buy, you know, I've also uh, met more people through this hobby by buying knives and learning about, I've also educated myself on knives. I mean, there really is, in the, what is it, how many years now I've been collecting knives? I'm going to say it's been roughly about eight years I've been in this hobby. Uh, I have yet to experience one bad experience in this hobby. One. Not even one. Uh, I'm talking overall on eBay, on uh, Instagram, wherever I get my knives from. Everybody seems to be so helpful. Everybody's so nice. And it's because we're all interconnected to our love for these objects. So this is Omar the Knife Shark Guy signing off. 
doing my special video on a Rufus Blue Mirror's custom service. Uh, I highly recommend this guy. I highly recommend buying an eye from this guy. Uh, that's another thing I wanted to mention. These night makers will work with you on making you a special piece based on your budget, whatever that budget might be. Uh, and don't be ashamed to, add, to tell them how much money you're willing to spend on a knife. They want to know that right off the bat. Because they're going to give you the best knife possible. So anyone out there that is heavily into high-end production knives and you're looking to go to that next step, uh, try Rukas Blumeris, man. This guy is just unbelievable. Also look into Andre Thorburn, look into Des Horn, look into J.D. Ellis, Trevor Berger is amazing, J.D. Van De Venter, all these guys. They have offered to fix anything going on with my knives. They have offered to fix things on my knife. I haven't gotten around to uh, communicating with them, you know, uh, because, you know, right now I'm perfectly fine with the way the knives are, and whatever's wrong with the knife, I can certainly live with it. I'm not going to gripe over that. I mean, it's perfectly fine. Um, but, yeah. This is Omar the Knife Sharp Guy signing off, talking about custom service, South African knives, and the South African knife community. I hope you found this video somewhat useful. I'm sorry if I were rambling on, but the Knife Gripes guy really got to me, and I think he was very wrong in, in his approach, whatever good he thinks he's doing. I hope maybe he will turn a page and see that, you know, he needs to change tactics. Although at this point, I don't think anybody's going to want to talk to him. Um, just want you guys to see the centering on these, man, because they are just beautiful. So this is Omar the Knife Shark Guy signing off. Hoping you'll find an Arugus Blumeris in your collection someday. Thank you so much for watching. Please comment on tonight's video. I hope to, to hear get a lot of get a lot of comments on this video. It's very, very special to me. I'm also going to be uh, letting Arucus Blue Maris know that I've done this video specifically for him and for all the knife makers out there that work so hard to give us these beautiful works of art. So, Omar the Knife Shark Guy signing off. Please sit, like and subscribe and share on my channel. I really do hope I get some comments tonight. Uh, although I winged this video and didn't have it scripted or anything, I hope there was some useful information in this video for you to think about. Um, thank you so much for watching, and God bless all you guys. Stay safe. Have a good evening.